In this tutorial, I'll be expanding a, a Lara interaction ability um, so that it doesn't just output sit, but it actually sits down using motion warping. And your player would just sit down and relax and then stand back up. This will be an introduction tutorial video just about how Lara is exploring adding interactions to the game. And I am personally using this way of interacting with objects uh, for picking up objects, opening up chests, um, and also uh, pressing down switches and levers. I've started a new fresh Lyra 5.4 project and I just called it Sit and Interact Tutorial. Um, and the first thing we want to do is we want to go to the map where the examples of interactions are. So those are located inside of the all plugins. And then there's some Explorer content, like it says, the plugin description builds onto Shooter Core, adding adventure elements. So I'm actually going to go ahead and make this one my add, add it to my favorites. Uh, so it's easy to access. I actually do really much like the way that they favorited all of these plugins. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and click that and open it. Uh, and then under the maps, there is an interaction test map. Okay. Uh, so this test map has a few objects that you can interact with, uh, but it's not obvious out of the box that you can. Uh, so they have interactable rocks so that sounds as exciting as it is uh, and then we have the chair uh, which doesn't do much uh, but in this tutorial we'll actually make the player sit on it and then stand up uh, when you play it might not be clear right away uh, which key to press for interact uh, but it, acts, it is actually g i think it just plays the reload animation uh, but then the more interesting one is the interactable rock. So if I press G, it picks it up and it puts it in my inventory. Uh, so this is technically a rock and then this is just a gun. Um, this is dating way back to my inventory uh, tutorial. I think that was my second video I ever did. But yeah, so if you want to find out which inputs are bound to the interaction you can navigate to the shooter explorer content input and that the mappings has the inventory mapping context and under the input action interact uh, you can see that there is the gamepad face button left and the g key uh, the gamepad face left button it most certainly is being consumed by something else um, so you might have to play with this, but for this tutorial, I'll just keep just using the G key. Okay, so to find out how this interaction is happening, uh, let's go ahead and play. And we're going to use this nice uh, debug command uh, that the Trinec documentation shows. Uh, so show debug and then its ability system. What's nice about this one is that you will have all the, the attributes, uh, but if you want to see the rest of the categories, uh, you can use this command as well. So ability system dot debug dot next category. This will show you all the granted tags and the current gameplay effects. So if we cycle again, so this is where we see all of the abilities that our player has. And what's nice about this too, that I didn't know, uh, is that it also shows which tasks are running at the moment. So it's it's a great way just to see everything that's going on in our ability system at the moment. And if you had more than one player and you wanted to debug another one or a different pawn, you could just press page up and down to cycle between all the different pawns in your scene. Yeah, so we see whenever we use something, we see that it's active. Um, and we can see that there are two interaction abilities, which is pretty confusing at first. And then the interesting bit is that there's also these interaction gameplay abilities. Uh, so as we get closer to other things to interact with, you can see that the GA interaction collect also shows up. And one thing that's interesting is that 
you never lose the abilities even when you go really far uh so once you once you add those abilities they're yours forever but yeah i actually debugged this and i noticed that the uh interact ability is added twice so we're going to go ahead and fix that so there's no confusion and there's no weird behavior with having two of everything and just as another side note uh the so when you try to interact with something so those are lyra world collectible and most of what this class has is just um an ability to trigger uh it also has what item will be picked up uh so you can see it here so the interaction ability to grant is the g interaction collect and that does all the logic for for picking up an item and then it picks up a rock but you could also change that in the instance to pick up anything you want at the moment the only class that implements an interactable interface is the lyra world collectible uh, but if you want to code different classes, that's very possible. And for example, this is the interaction collect gameplay ability. Uh, you can make as many interaction abilities as you want. Uh, they're just Lyra gameplay abilities. And the only thing that you need is to have the ability trigger be from this tag here. So ability interaction activate. And the logic that you want to add is to the activate ability from event. Okay, so let's start from the GA interact. So GA interact. So all the all the pawns get this interact gameplay ability. So this ability is granted on spawn. So if you go to the details for GA interact, and it has the activation policy of on spawn. So on spawn, your player will have this ability and immediately it'll start looking for interactables and uh, it'll scan for whenever you press the interact key, which is G in our case. And when it looks for interactable, it just traces towards the camera center and it just waits for hitting something that is interactable and then it updates the interaction and all the ui technically your character has all these interact abilities uh, but it will only interact with whatever it's actually looking at uh, or whatever gets hit by this trace uh, so first of all let's just see uh, where this ability is added okay so i'm just gonna get the reference viewer okay uh, so it's given by the ability set so i'm just going to recenter the graph uh, and here's a problem uh, so we have it we have it in our experience but we also have it in our uh, lara action set and if we recenter on this one uh, we can see that <laughs> So the experience has this action set and the experience also has the ability set directly on it. Um, so I'm going to remove the immediate ability set on, on the experience. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. So control E. Okay. So in our inventory experience, which is what this map is using. So if I go to our world settings, and I go to the default gameplay experience, you can see it's using this experience. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open that. And then you can see that it's using the action set, which takes care of giving the ability set. Um, so we can go ahead and remove this action here that essentially just adds the ability set again so that's why we have it twice uh, so i'm just going to delete this and now when we play and we have the debug on we shouldn't see a duplication of the ability uh so show debug okay sweet so now i just have one interact ability 
and I get the sit interaction and the collect just once. If we want to hide this interaction trace debug, all you need to do is go to the GA interact and then you can just turn off the show debug. And now when you play, you won't see that trace anymore. Uh, but in our case, we are interested to see where that hits. So I'm just going to stop that and show debug. Okay, so this is what comes out of the box for Lyra. Uh, so now we can get started on actually doing our ability. Uh, let's click on any of the chairs and that in its detail panels, you'll see that it has the ability that's granted is this interaction sit. Uh, so I'm just going to navigate to it and open it up. Our interaction sit, all it does is that whenever this ability is activated by the interact ability, it just prints out sit and then it has a gameplay cue, uh, which is, I think, mostly just a sound. Uh, and then if you have authority, it doesn't do much, but it's it's ready, it's there. Uh, and if it does not have authority, then it broadcasts this uh, gameplay message to the UI to just show the duration of the interaction. And then it plays this montage, which is just the generic unequip uh, montage. First of all, I was very interested in this bit uh, because it's, it could be useful for some interactions to show a, a duration, um, especially if you're like unlocking a door and it takes a certain amount and you can get interrupted by some kind of gameplay action, but it wasn't working right away. Uh, so that is because uh, this has authority check. You might be a server player, but also be locally controlled. Um, so what I did is that I added just is locally controlled. So then I just move everything. Um, so essentially when you are locally controlled, that is when we want to broadcast to our UI. So I'm just going to go like that. Okay. And, and also there was the fact that really 0.5 seconds didn't matter. Uh, so I'm just going to promote this to a variable. So I'll call this interaction duration. Okay. And I will add, I will just add a delay. So before the ability ends, I'll just have a delay of the interaction duration. Okay, and then add the ability. I am playing in standalone. I could also play as listen server, uh, just one person. Okay, so when I press G, it shows a, yeah, it shows a progress. Uh, but the progress bar is not is not updating with it. Um, so the next part of fixing this was to locate that logic and see how it was set up. Um, so what you can do to figure that out is you can click the down arrow and then search for references for the interaction duration message. Um, so in this case, it was in the widget for the ability progress. So I'm just going to press control E to open it up. Okay. And then navigate to the graph. All right. So the way it, it, um, updated its progress was through a parameter name percent, which is pretty interesting because that parameter does not exist. Um, so, uh, progress border, I'm just going to go navigate to the brush, to the material of the progress border. So if you double click on it, and if you go to the parent, uh, you'll notice that the parameter has an active range, which is a RGBA, and it has nothing to do with progress. 
And if you play around with the active range, what you'll notice is that this is actually 0 to 65. So the, the progress really is the active range between R and G, and that pretty much represents the percentage. And I think it gives more control. It's an interesting setup. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the graph for the ability progress widget. And we do have uh, this node over here that resets it. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste this one. And I'm going to paste it where the percent is supposed to be. So in this case, I can just plug that into the G value. And I'm going to steal this node's execution pins. And there you go. And I think we can delete that one because it didn't really do anything. And I got to make sure to uh, set up the target for the material instance that's being modified. Uh, okay, so that looks good. I'm just going to rearrange a little bit. Okay, so that should be good. And if you wanted to start from something somewhere else, then you could just add that value and do the math. So now when I play and I interact, there you go. It shows up. And it's interesting that it also shows the <laughs> a negative value. So maybe in that widget, which we could ensure just to make sure that uh, it clamps to zero. Uh, but yeah, that's a nice functionality that comes out of the box. And this is how to make it show up and, and work really nicely. Another thing that could be useful is whenever you do your, your sitting down ability, maybe you want the player to just stay sitting and observe the world, maybe change a camera mode, uh, like in this video for binoculars. So to do that, Instead of just having a delay and automatically ending the ability, what you could do is you could wait for the confirm or cancel inputs. And for that, you can you can find that information in my uh, targeting video here. So I'll, I'll just post the link. Um, but that would be a nice way to uh, be able to just stop sitting, maybe right click or press the B button. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you can't just wait for the ability input uh, because technically the ability input is on the GA interact ability and this sitting ability is not directly bound to the input uh, but it is bound to uh, the, the the gameplay event trigger uh, the next part of this video uh, we're just going to play the sitting down montage and then the standing up montage. Uh, so Lara now comes with nice sitting animations. I think they might be getting ready for uh, some examples for contextual animations, which is pretty exciting. Uh, but yeah, for now, I will just change this one's name to sitting down montage. And then I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm call, calling this one stand up montage. And then I'm going to search for sit. And there's a whole bunch of animations. <laughs> like there's a, there's a lot to choose from. Um, so what the, which one I want is the uh, sit into forward montage. Okay, so I'm just going to open that one up. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And it already comes with some motion warping, which we will get to in a second. And then the stand-up montage. I'm going to search for sit. And then this one is just called uh, sit out stand. Okay, so uh, we play the, the montage for sitting down. And then instead of a delay, uh, or you know what, I'll just push this all over here. And then I'm just going to copy this over there. Okay, and they should cancel uh, or they should stop when the ability ends. 
And then this one, I want it to be the stand-up montage. Okay, so on complete, uninterrupted, on canceled. All right. Actually, this one on canceled, it'd be great if it just ends the ability and interrupt it as well. So we just want it to play the stand-up if it completes. Uh, so now if I play and I try to interact, <laughs> so she will sit down. Her hand icon and her gun are still visible. She gets up. One thing that is a bit iffy was the the blending between so this one we actually wanted to happen on blend out so that it will blend out nicely so let's try that again so it sits down all right okay nice that's a nice blending uh, the first thing we want to do is that in our montage we want to disable the hand ik's and also uh, scale down the weapon Okay, so let's go ahead and open up these montage. Uh, so into forward montage. You can duplicate it because there's a chance that this may be used in the future uh, by Epic, um, is my guess anyways. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to add some curves. Uh, so and then disable the hand IK and the right hand IK. So why not do both? Uh, so hand IK, I think it's the right one. Okay, and these ones, I'm just going to middle mouse click and then set it to one because we want to fully disable it. And same with the right hand IK. So edit selected curves, then middle mouse click, and I will set this to one. And then there's the scale down weapon R. Um, so this one, I've noticed it in the unequip montage. Okay, so whenever it starts, it doesn't have any scaling. So a zero. And then not long after, I'm just going to fully scale down. Right, and it'll sca stay scaled down. Uh, so I'm just going to make this a nice smooth curve. So I'm going to right click on it or bounding box, right click on it and click on auto. Okay. And then I will do the same thing for the other animation. Okay. So sitting. Just got to search for the stand up. I'm going to add a value of 1 at 0 because we're fully scaled down. And then another one around here, I guess. And let's keep it, let's get it back to 0. Okay, so auto. I'm going to play this one just so I see when they're fully, when they stand up. Actually, this one doesn't need to be that long, or else we're going to be waiting around, not doing anything. So we can probably shorten the duration of this montage. So I'm just going to go ahead and move these ones over here. I'm holding up shift uh, so that it moves. Um, it just snaps in the vertical space. So I, I just dragged to the left. All right, so what I can do is that I can set the end time to be 2.95, so okay, so I get up and it ends there. Great. 
So now when we play, all right, so the gun disappeared and the hands are no longer wonky. The next thing we want to do is we want our player to motion warp to the chair whenever they're sitting down. Um, so for that, you'll notice that the sitting down montage, it already has a motion warping animation notify state. Uh, so, so it will warp to a certain target with this name. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and call this one just chair so we can use that. And a, that warp point, a, yes, it will be static. It does not move unless you're playing some kind of weird musical chair where the chairs move. Uh, in our case, this animation, it walks, they walk pretty far before they go in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and extend that warping even further. So it may lead to some foot sliding, uh, but it will have a better effect for, for this tutorial. For our character to be able to to use this motion warping and to set the target uh, location, we need our player to actually have the motion warping component. I'm going to go ahead and find which pawn we're using. I'll just play. Search for, I think they're called Explorer. Or, ah, that's right, I am not in the right world. Uh, so I'm going to choose the server world interaction test map. Okay, and then I will find that uh, my my hero is just called Hero Explorer. Okay, I'm just going to click on that and I'm going to stop. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add the motion warping component. So motion warping. And that's all we need to do in the Hero Explorer. And then let's go to our sit interaction. And then we need to get that motion component from the Explorer. Uh, so right before we play our first animation, I'm just going to move this to the side. This also actually has to go back over here, just in case you have any server code. Okay, so it, both of them need to have the motion happening. I'm just going to connect those two. Ah, there you go. Okay, so after we do whatever our client insert does and locally control does, uh, we're going to get the Lara character from actor info. Or technically, we could just get the avatar actor get component by class. Okay, and then this one I'm going to search for the motion warping component. Okay, and then we need to call add or update uh, warp target. And then in our case, it's just going to be from transform uh, because we're going to use the transform from the chair directly. So that's the case where uh, maybe we want to have different chair spots or uh, something other than the position of the chair. Uh, but I'm not going to do that here uh, because this one is mostly just an introduction to what you can do with interactions. Yeah, our warp target name is chair because it's the same name as we've given to our motion warping. Okay, and then our target, the target that comes from the activate ability from event is actually the chair. Um, so I'm just going to drag that out and get the transform of the chair. So get actor transform. And you can notice that on the chair, there is a contextual anim scene actor. Uh, and there's also a smart object. Um, so I think those are probably intended to be used by Ly the Lyra team in the future. And I'm, I'm excited to see what they do with this because I haven't personally dug into this. Uh, but for now, we're just going to use the location of, of the chair, 
which is inside of it. So that will be a little problematic, uh, but we'll see. So back into the interaction sit, we're just going to plug this into our, well, it's pretty far, <laughs> our target transform. Okay, so we got our actor or the chair transform and we are using it as our warp point. I interact. <laughs> so you can see that there's all sorts of wrong here. Um, it seems to be a difference in rotation, the locations there, and also the chair is colliding with our player. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to make the chair just not collide with anything while we're interacting. Uh, for the target, the target is the chair. So I'm just going to say set actor collision enable collision and then that will be false i will also save this as a as a variable so promote to variable i'll call this one share target okay uh so whenever the ability ends we're going to turn back on the collision of the chair I'm going to go ahead and override the on end ability and then if the chair target is valid so it's good to, to check for validity uh, then we set the actor enable collision so it'd probably be best to handle it on the chair itself uh but this will do Okay, so at least now we can sit in <laughs> sit in the chair. Okay, so one of the problems is that the rotation is not correct. The hero explorer itself, it's actually pointing towards X. Uh, so we're, what, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the interactable chair also points to X. Uh, I'm going to move things around. And also the base is called the base, but it's really the back. Uh, which is interesting. Okay, so I'm going to just change them all. If you want the center of this object to be where the player sits down, that's probably enough room. And then I'm going to go to the top view, going to move this one, and then move that one. I could also use the the chair starter content Great. Okay, so there's our chairs and they're mostly half in the ground. So I'm just going to select all of them and pull them up. Uh, whatever matches the, the height of the players, I think. Okay, and then when we play, let's see what happens. So another problem that we saw was that the camera was still controlling the yaw of the pawn. Um, so what we want to do, right before the montages happen, we want to get the Lyra, oh, Lyra character from actor info. And then we want to set use control rotation yaw, set use controller rotation yaw to false. Uh, and then when everything is done and over with uh we can reset that to true okay so i'm just going to copy that and paste it over here so after we enable the collisions uh so if this is not valid actually we might as well check the validity alt here also so is valid oh is valid Okay, so we say, yes, you can use the rotation yaw now. Okay, so now when we play, our camera shouldn't affect the rotation of the pawn anymore. Okay, so we go ahead and we sit down. Awesome, he looks very chill in his chair box. The height is almost there, but the depth is not there yet. And also, like, you... As you notice, I can still use any other abilities when I'm sitting down. So uh, we'll have to add a uh, 
we'll just have to add a something that will stop that from happening. Okay, so if I put that a little bit further and then this further down and okay, I might have pushed it the wrong way. And then this one, you know what? I don't really want snapping and 10 is, is a big number. What I could do is I could always update this while I'm playing. And I think something is weird with these ones. Uh, oh no, they were okay. Okay, I'll try that again. So I interact. Alright, that's not bad. I just need to be lower and more inward. So lower. And... Uh, this one was okay, I think. So I'm interacting. Yeah, not bad. Okay, so one more edit. I should do it. All right. That looks pretty comfy. So he gets back up and ready to fight again. Okay, so one thing I want to do is that while you're sitting down and taking a, a break from the fight, you shouldn't be able to just go back in, unless that is what you want. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a tag relationship to uh, for our sitting down. So first of all, I'm going to add a status tag to our GA interaction sit. Um, so the activation owns these tags. Um, so I'm just going to add or I'm just going to see what's already out there. Uh, so I'm going to go to all and then search for relationship. And so this is pretty much the tag relationship of our shooter hero. Um, so to stop all the actions, um, we check the status for death or dying. Um, so I'm just going to add a status tag for uh, you're essentially just sitting. So you can't do anything. Uh, so activation own tag. I'm going to add status. And then I'm just going to add a sub tag. And in the default gameplay tags is fine. So status dot sitting. So comment is currently engaged in sitting. And then I actually have to add it. So sitting. Compile and save. Uh, great. Uh, so then I'm going to just add the activation block tag for sitting. Oh, there it is. Perfect. Uh, okay, so I interact. And I can't do anything while I am sitting. Ooh, back in action. Okay, so the next problem we might face is that we can interact from any direction. Um, so what would be great with this is if we could implement a function for can interact in the actor itself. Uh, but to, to avoid some code this tutorial, uh, we're just going to add that logic whenever you try to activate the ability and then just do nothing if you're not in front of the uh, chair or facing the chair. So the first time I wanted to add this logic to just um, just allow the interaction when the player is in front of the chair. Uh, my first thought was to add it to can activate ability. But unfortunately, at this point, we don't actually know what the target is or what, what chair we're targeting at the moment. But we do know that information whenever we activate the ability from event. Um, so the best course of action would probably be um, to have some logic that runs even before this ability is triggered. Um, logic for in the interact ability. 
Uh, but for now, I'm just going to get rid of this here. Um, so I'm just going to create a new function. And I'm just going to call this one can interact. Or I'll make this one even more specific. So can sit down. Can player sit down. And this one will just have one output. So can sit down. And then two inputs. So just the owner and the target. Okay, so those can just be actors. Actor reference. Or actor object reference. Uh, so the owner. And then the target, or in our case, the chair. So the first thing we want to do is to verify that the player is standing in front of the chair. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the actor location. So I just want to get the vector uh, from the chair to the actor. Okay, so minus get actor location. Okay, and I don't care about any Z value. I just want to know if they're in front or behind. Okay, so I'm going to normalize 2D. And then I'm going to compare to the forward vector of the chair. Get actor forward vector. And I'm going to get the dot product between the two. And if that dot product is greater than or equal to zero, it just means that it is in front of it. So I'm just going to add an and. Okay, I'm just going to surround all of this with a comment just to be clear about what this is for. So if player is in front of the chair, and then the other part, we just want to see, or we just want to make sure that we're uh, facing the chair, maybe from an angle of 45 degree to another to the other 45 degree. Uh, so let's get the owner. So it's nice that I can just access the input variables by name. Okay, so get actor forward vector. Okay, and then I'll just make them into 2D, multiply it by 1, 1, and 0, and that will give me a 2D vector. All right. And then I'm going to get the, the opposite vector for the owner because I, I just want to compare them directly. I don't want to check how different they are, but how similar that is. All right. So if it's greater or equal to 0.5, so that means that uh, we're facing the chair. All right. So I'm going to add a comment for that. So verify player is facing the chair. All right. So if we are in front of the chair and if we are facing the chair, then yes, we can interact with this chair. Okay. So I'm going to call that function that we just created. And Essentially, uh, if we if we can sit down, everything's great. If we cannot, then we're just going to go ahead and cancel the ability. And so that would call this here. And it's not a big deal because we have a bunch of valid checks. And then we need the instigator and then the target for the chair. If I try to interact from the back, it fails. But if I'm 45 degrees, it's fine. Another issue that may happen or that will happen if you have a, a multiplayer game 
is that <laughs> two different people can sit on the same chair. Start in different editor windows. Okay, so this one sits down and I <laughs> don't want to shoot him. Oh no. Oh, it did stop him from interacting. Okay, so it works perfectly for server, but not so much for clients. So this may also be due to the fact that uh, we didn't exactly disable collisions reliably. In this example project, it is not possible for the client or the server to tell the client that the chair has its collisions on or off or that it's already occupied because it does not replicate. So in your project, if you want to make sure that that works, you would want to replicate the interactable chair and then maybe you could have a boolean that says if the chair is occupied and then in your interaction sit you can add that to your logic on can player sit down um, and then essentially just cast your target to the chair and verify and make sure that it's not already in use yeah this whole logic it would help a lot if it was in um I'm just going to open the interactable chair. Uh, so the class settings. So this one has an interactable target implementation. And this essentially is just a interface in code that it allows you to essentially have a, a gameplay ability and it updates it well. And then the pick up bowl is just like, oh, okay, can you pick it up? And what do you get in inventory when you pick it up? Personally, in my project, I've highly or intensely added to the interactable target interface. Um, so you can you can do a lot with that. And the last cut call out I'd like to make for this video uh, is that while this interaction ability does exist in the interaction test map and in this explorer content. If you try to add interactions uh, to your your shooter maps, it's a bit challenging. I try to essentially just enable this plugin inside the shooter maps content or inside the shooter core content, but then you have this circular dependency happening. So what I personally did is that I moved all the interact and input for the interaction and the user interface. I moved it all inside of my my core content gameplay feature plugin. So that's one thing you could do, especially if interactions are at, at the core of your gameplay and it makes it easier to work with. It's still great to have this Explorer content uh, gameplay plugin feature uh, just to play around with ideas. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely it definitely helps to have it inside of your shooter core or uh, your, your game core content. So yeah, I hope that this video was useful for you to start digging into interaction abilities that you need for your game, whether it be picking up things, interacting with switches, opening up doors, and whatnot. I feel like this one was already <laughs> jam-packed with things, but there's so much to learn and so much to cover. Um, but as always, thank you for your time and thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.